Hi friends, Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I was going to do a little create with me to create this little junk journal folio. Um, I have a bunch of these number 10 envelopes that I was given when a business was changing their address. Um, so I've started with some tea dyed envelopes and we're going to make this cute little four by six folio and I'll show you it. Give you a little flip through here. So I just have it tied with some seam binding. It's got um, a tuck spot on the front. And this one I've kind of done a little bird theme. So I have a little tag in the front here. And then there is a pocket on the side here for a little note card or even more than one note card. And then just in the middle, the signature, it's one little signature and I wanted it to be fairly plain so that you could do a lot of journaling inside of it. And this one has a little flap. And this is the other side, very plain. I didn't put any pockets or anything on here. I didn't want it to get too thick. And then in the back, there's another little um, tuck spot, little side pocket here for a note card. And then on the back, there's another tuck spot um, on the back here that I've put a tag in. So I hope that you'll join me today as we create this cute little envelope folio. So for this project, you're going to need um, envelopes and I've uh, coffee stained my envelopes. You could certainly use white ones if you wanted to. You would probably just need to do some more distressing if you wanted them to look vintage. And you could certainly not do this vintage at all. You could just use, you know, any scrapbooking paper or, you know, book pages that you want. I'm going to make this in a vintage style, so I'm starting with these tea dyed. Then I'll have to do a little less distressing on them. Um, then also book pages. I love being able to use book pages and projects to use them up. Um, some card stock. So we'll be using this just to give some stability to our notebook once we um, get started. And then you'll need just some other pages to make your signatures out of. So I've got six pieces of um, coffee dyed patterned lined paper that I'm going to use for my signatures. And then um, the tools that you're going to need are scissors, excuse me, I've got stuff all over the place, my scissors, a pencil, a ruler, some um, distress inks or distress oxides, um, either one, whichever you like, and some glues. I'm probably going to go between these three, my um, Beacon 3-in-1 glue, my Art Glitter glue, and my Boohoo glue stick. So um, I think that's all that we're going to need. I also sewed one of mine. So, and, and of course, you know, if you want to decorate, you'll need some collage bits and things like that to um, dress it up a bit. But I also sewed mine down the middle. So you certainly don't have to do that. And we'll talk about a different way to bind it. But I did do that just for, um, for that one. So, all right, let's get building here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our envelopes down a little bit. Um, I don't want a, a folio that's this tall. Um, I was thinking four by six might be nice. And since these are about um, four and an eighth inches wide by, I think they're nine and a half. Yeah, nine and a half inches long. Um, I'm gonna cut this down to be a four by six um, folio. So. The, what we're going to do to make them fit together, so we're going to put them together like this, but we're going to cut them down first so that we can add some pockets to the inside or to the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut each of these down to six and a quarter so that my pages, when, when we make them, will be nice, nicely fitting inside. So I'm going to cut one of the envelopes with the flap down like this, and then the other one I'm going to cut upside down with the flap up folded up like that so that that way when we have our um, when we have it cut we'll be able to slide them together correctly so I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to cut it at six and a quarter with the flap folded down and we want to keep these because we'll use those two and then this one I'm going to do with the flap folded up at six and a quarter inches as well 
So now we have these four pieces that we're going to put together for our base. Um, and what I'm going to do when I put them together, I'm gonna to put them together so that the opening is pointed down. Because then what I can do is I can use these pieces that we have left over to make a little pocket and it will also close up the bottom for us. So, um, so that's what we're gonna do. So let's put the first part together first and then we'll do the other one. So I'm going to use my Beacon 3-in-1 glue for this part. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue on, so if I have them open like this, I'm going to glue on one side of the flap here because this is going to slide into here to be glued down. So I'm using my 3-in-1 glue um, because it takes a little bit longer to set up and as I fidget with it to get it in the right place, I wanna be sure that I'm not, you know, sticking it down. So glitter glue grabs pretty fast. And so sometimes if you want a little bit more time to sort of move things around, the three-in-one glue works a little bit better for that. Okay, so now I'm going to try to put this in here and then I'm going to make sure I've got it lined up so that my seams are even and I have a nice folded folio here and this side we're going to do as well but let's start here make sure that's nice and glued down I think I have that in the right spot there and so then what we're going to do is we're going to glue this flap down so that we don't have that sticking up either Although you could, now this I'm coming up with on the fly, so bear with me. But if we put one of these, whoops, as a pocket, you could actually make a little like tuck spot under here if you wanted to as well. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? But that would be on the back, which is fine. <laughs> if we glued it the other way, then it would be on the front but this is gonna be on the back. So let's just go ahead and glue this down for now. But as I'm finding out, because I'm trying to use up some of these envelopes, I have a lot of them. There's so many different things you can do with them with all these different flaps and stuff. So just remember to keep your options open. Okay, so I just laid that over. Um, I'm gonna make sure that it opens nice but it also folds together as well. Okay, so now our, the top portion is done. And now we have these two little pieces that we ended up cutting off. And we are going to put these on as uh, pockets. So now we could put them on so that it's a straight pocket and we could glue that in and make it um, a pocket there or we can just make it like a little side tuck. So um, for the front one, I'm gonna do the side tuck and all I'm going to do for that is I'm going to cut this into the same line. So I'm just going to open up that flap and then just cut along this line so that when we put it on, we have a nice little tuck spot in the front and we'll be covering this. And then in the back, you can see when we glue this down, um, it's going to make a little side pocket here, but it also closes up our bottom, which is what we wanted to happen there. And then for this one, actually, I think I'm gonna try to do it as a just a back pocket because on the back of a notebook sometimes it's nice to just have a full pocket um, having a tuck spot on the back might pull things out now I am going to do the back first because I'm going to leave this flap on to glue it down and then when I put this one on the front It'll go right over that flap that we've glued down. 
<clears throat> and it'll make a, um, you know, well, this is just going to be a tuck spot, but this is going to be a full pocket. And I think before I do that, I'm going to add my cardstock because as I glue things on, it's going to get hard for me to glue things on. So let's start with the back. Now I had cut these pieces of cardstock because I wanted to add some weight to the front and the back. And I cut them down to four inches by six and an eighth of an inch. So they're a little tiny bit smaller than the envelope size itself, which is what I wanted. I, I wanted it to be a little bit smaller so that, um, so that there would be just a teeny bit of a border around it. Um, To give way so that's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking and so before I do any of this um, I'm gonna work on the back first and I want the cardstock down first so that I can put my pocket on second and then we will we'll glue this down so that it gives us a little pocket here to put something in and then we'll have that open and ready to go to be covered as well. So, um, if you had a sturdier base to start with, you don't, you wouldn't necessarily need to put the cardstock all the way down to the bottom. You could just make sure it went back behind the um, the the pocket. But because this, you know, is just envelope here, I want to make sure I give, you know, a sturdy base to the whole thing. So I'm going to put the cardstock on the full front and back of this um, so that it gives it a nice sturdy base. Um, and now just for fun, I'm going to, I'm going to give this some, the top of this, some scalloped edges. since it's going to be visible anyway. So I'm just using a little twirler and obviously this is completely optional. And then before I put it down, I am just going to make sure I ink around it a little bit. So when you cut any kind of paper, it's usually white on the sides and um, I like to cover that up. So I don't really need to do the bottom, but since it'll be covered, but I wanna make sure my edges are all done. So you can see that'll be nice there. And I am going to, for this, I'm going to use my three in one glue too. Just going to get this as close to the top as I can since my um, pocket will be at the bottom. Let that set up for just a second. Oop. Okay, and now we can put our pocket on. And what I'm going to do when I put the pockets on, I wanna glue them from the inside. Um, since I can only glue a certain amount of them, I have to be careful because when I put this on, part of it would you know, glue down to the back and then I would, you know, this part wouldn't be open. So I wanna be sure that I glue it just from wherever it sits on the envelope down so that I don't end up gluing it shut, which is what I want to avoid. So you can see this pocket, when I put it on, goes about right about to that curve there and then all the way down. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my glue starting from that halfway mark and then going down just on the side that's here so that I don't glue it shut. And just make sure it's snug against the side and snug against the bottom. And now we still have our nice big pocket on this side um, for us to put things in. Okay, so now on the back, 
we have our nice pocket and there's one more thing I'm going to do before I glue it down, which I could have done beforehand, but I didn't. So um, I want to do, I want to do a little nodule there. And I'm sure that once I decide to cover it, I'm going to have to do this again, but I always like to mark my middle because I always seem to mess it up. Now let's see if I can get this in here at the right spot. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll just do a little inking on there to kind of make it visible. And we are going to do some collage on this pocket, but I thought it would be nice to have a little cut out there to show where it is. Okay, so now we got to, to glue the bottom, the rest of this pocket on so that um, it'll stay for us. So I'm just going to add some glue to the side here. I'm just going to try to get the very, very edge of my pocket. And then I'll just add some glue to this little flap here. but we're gonna be covering this too with our with our card over here, so. Okay. So now we have that pocket done, so you can see we'll be able to stick a nice tag or something in there, that'll be, that'll be great. And I'm just going to, before I glue anything else down, I'm just gonna make sure my fold is still okay. Because as you add layers to it, sometimes your folds get a little wonky. So um, you might want to just be sure your folds are okay. All right, so now we can do the front. And let's just think about this. So we're going to put our cardstock down and do the same thing um, over here. After our cardstock is on, we're going to, to put this one on the bottom so that we have a nice, our big pocket on this side as well. So um, I'm going to add my little scallops again so that my front matches the back there we go and I'll distress a little bit as well and once again I don't really need to do too much of the bottom since it'll be hidden beneath our little tuck spot Okay. <clears throat> And that adds a nice sturdiness to our little notebook folio thing there. Okay, and now this one, we're gonna do the same thing we did on the back. We're just going to glue it here um, because we want the front open to be a nice tuck spot for us. So um, I'm going to put some glue starting at about the halfway mark. and down. And then, once again, we'll just slide that on there. And I'm just gonna put my fingers in here and make sure nothing seeped out, but I think we're good. And you can see now, as I fix this, that we have a tuck spot right here in the front. So it's not a full pocket, but it's just a nice little tuck spot. And we'll be adding something to this to give that a little bit more weight um, and stability as well. So that is our front and our back. How cute is that? All right, and now let's do some covering. So always my goal is to use up book pages. So because I feel like I'm always using um, the covers for journals and different things like that, 
I always have a ton of book pages and I don't I certainly don't want to waste them. I, I want to use them up. So these are, these are, this is a, um, a vintage book, but it's not, you know, it's not super old. So the pages are still a pretty good thickness um, for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the, the front and the back here with some book page. And then I'm going to cover these two sides with book page as well. And because I kind of like the shabbiness of torn edges, I'm going to try and tear all the edges. So let's do the insides first. And so I know that my height is six and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this down to a six inch high um, piece so that we can measure out where this goes, because obviously we're going to want to make sure that our edge aligns with this edge so that we can we can see it there. So I'm going to tear this book page first so that I have one torn edge and I'm just going to tear it right on the edge of the words and save these because we can use those too. And I'll show you something at the end of this video that you can do with like little bits of paper like that, just because I love the way they feel and it seems like such a waste to, to let them, let them go. <laughs> Okay, so the same thing here, we're going to just tear off the bottom edge here. And then I'm going to measure my six inches so that we can do the inside piece. Okay, so now I have three torn edges and that's going to be that's going to cover it like this so you can see i have my little border because of my torn edges and then to measure where we're going to um, cut or tear in my case i'm just going to slide this into the pocket and i'm going to make sure that it slides all the way in and is as even as possible to the end of the pocket so now you can do one of two things. You can use a pencil to trace your edge so you know where to tear or cut, or you can distress the edges. And since um, distressing is never a bad thing, <laughs> and if you were using a white envelope, this would sort of serve as you know double duty for you. You can just distress that piece of, or the edge of the envelope and the piece of paper or the piece of book page that we put in there to get our line. So you can see now when I pull this book page out, I have a nice clear line on where I need to cut to cover the front of this book. So you could certainly cut this. And if you were cutting, you would want to be sure to cut on the inside of your line so that you have your border. Um, but I'm going to tear and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to tear right on the inside of the line as best as I can. And since I like this look, I'm not real concerned with, you know, with how jagged it is, because I know that I'll like it either way. And then you can see when we put it down, we have a nice fitted piece of book page. Now you can see this um, looks like it's sticking out a little bit, so I'm just gonna tear that off. And then I actually, because the bottom part has more of a border, I may just tear off a little bit more up to there as well. Yep, I like the way that looks better. And now before I glue this down, I am going to distress the, the book page because I want it to um, kind of fit in with the coffee stained style of the envelope. And for this one, I am using gathered twigs. And I'm just going to go around all the edges. And we're going to do the same thing with the other one. And maybe before I glue them down, I'm going to go ahead and cut the other one too so that we are ready to go. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to tear and measure to six inches high. And we're going to do three sides torn. And 
And you could use, you know, a, a deckled edge ruler uh, for tearing as well. Um, I even just like this sort of straight edge tear. So it's neat and messy <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> Okay, so now I have my six inch high again, and this time we're gonna slide it into this side. And once again, make sure it's all the way into the bottom. It takes a little finagling to be sure that you're down there, but you wanna be, you know, down there as much as you can. So um, this time I'll just use a pencil just to show you but it's the same exact thing as if we were using um, using the distressing. So now I have sort of a drawn line that I can look at to tear from here as well. And once again, we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tear right inside that line that I drew. and see what we come up with. <clears throat> and that one turned out pretty good on the first try. So let's go ahead and distress that one as well. Okay, now we have our insides ready to go. So for this one, I think I'm going to use my glue stick for this one um, because I feel like it really helps me get all the edges down really well. So I'm just going to grab my glue book page here. That's another good use for book pages is using them for <laughs> sort of your um, glue spot so you don't get glue everywhere. And then as you end up gluing the book pages together, you can use them for ephemera, making tags, making pockets and things like that. Um, having a sturdy base of a couple book pages glued together is always really good for building ephemera. And I will actually, I've done some um, videos on doing that, making book page tags, book page envelopes, um, book page pockets. So I'll link to those down below if you're interested in seeing how to do that. Okay. Okay. Whoops. It doesn't want to go down as easy. There we go. Okay. So now we have a nice vintagey inside. And now we need to cover our tuck spot and pocket on the outside. And once again, I'm going to start with book page. Um, but once again, you could use any other, you know, paper or scrapbook paper, you know, that you're trying to use up. And the nice thing about this too is that because it's nice and small, you could probably go into your, you know, um, just leftover bits of paper and be able to cover things. So like even this, you know, this would um, almost just fit right over there. If I did it sideways, it certainly would. And I could even cover both of them with this. So, and this is just a scrap of something that, you know, I had. So make sure you're using up your stuff for sure. All right. So I'm going to cut this just about in half um, because I want to be sure that I have enough for both sides. I'm going to use this one page to cover the front and the back. Um, let's do this one first. And I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to tear all my edges. Um, so let's see. I just want to make sure because I like to have the words on. So I'm going to probably tear both of these sides so that the blank edges are kind of torn off. 
Um, so let's go ahead and start with this side. And when you're tearing, um, sometimes I find if you're trying to tear like a little piece off, it's harder to tear the little piece to make it sort of consistent. So I always put the big side um, as my, you know, ripping edge and I hold the small side under my ruler. And when you do that, you just have to be sure that you're holding the ruler down really tight so that it doesn't slide out from underneath of you. But you can see that gives me a nice, nice straight edge and, but also, you know, torn like I like to have it. Okay, so now I'm going to tear the other side as well. And this one I'm just gonna kinda mark with my nail. Um, I wanna have a little bit of a border and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna put the small edge under my ruler because I think that tears better. And I'm just gonna line it up with my um, lines on my, my board here so that I'm tearing relatively straight. And once again, just make sure you're holding the ruler down very tightly. And now this should fit here. And before I put my, because I am going to have to put my little notch in there again, um, I am going to tear the bottom off too. So I have sort of the whole piece ready to go. So this one looks like it's going to be about right there. And let me line it up. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and do this. What I'm going to try to do is I'm just gonna slip this on the inside so I can um, make sure that my notch is lined up pretty good. So I'm just going to very lightly make a little, make a little line there. I may have to do some erasing on that one because I think that I want to be sure that. Let's try. Yeah. Now that wasn't torn. So I could add a little tear to this if I wanted to. So I'm just going to try. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do. I'm going to use, I'm just going to make sure that my pencil edge is erased, but then I'm just going to use the edge of my scissors to kind of rough this up a little since it's not torn. So all I'm doing is just scraping the blade along the edge a little bit to rough it up. think that's all I need to do there. Okay, so we'll distress those in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do this side as well. So um, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to start with my torn edge here. And this one, I'm just going to tear two of the edges because what's going to happen when I put this in, we're going to be tearing off the rest um, around. So same thing here. I'm putting it down as much as I can in there. I'm just going to use my pencil to lightly draw where the edge is. And then I'm, I'm gonna tear this one. And actually I'm going to tear it with my ruler. So I'm just gonna line up my ruler right inside the line that I drew. I can see it here. And then we'll tear both sides. And then if we have to do some additional tearing to make sure it's where we want it, we can do that as well. So let's see how we did. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, and actually it looks like I could probably tear off a little bit more because I'm right at the edge. Although that's not too bad if I, as long as when I'm gluing it down, I line it up good, <laughs> I should be all right. So I am just gonna try and tear some of these little, little edges off of here. Okay, so this is how this is going to look. 
So let's go ahead and get these distressed. Okay, pull out my glue paper again. And you can see this one's, um, it's a little, still a little sticky. So I'm just going to turn the page. And if these end up gluing together, that's okay with me because then I can use it to make tags or pockets or something like that. Okay, we're getting there. Okay. coming together. Okay, so now I want to put my signature together. So what I've done is I've cut six pieces of paper that I want to put inside um, my folio, and I've cut them to eight, eight inches wide by six inches tall um, so that I have room to fold. Now I do have one that is a little bit longer because I'm just going to make a little fold over um, and maybe we'll make it a tuck spot or something, but this one is six inches tall by almost 11 inches long. So you could, I'm sure you could do, you know, 11 to make it easy, but it's about maybe 10 and three quarters that I've done. And I just, I just kind of cut that and eyeballed it. So now I'm just going to take all of my papers and actually they're not all six inches high. This one's a little bit shorter. Um, but I always think that's fun anyway. So now I'm just gonna fold them all in half and I'll do this one last. And I have some lined paper here. And because this has um, holes in it, I'm just gonna you know, fold one so that the holes are on top and fold the other one so that the holes are on the bottom. And then for this one, now I need to be sure that I have a four inch fold. So I'm just going to grab my ruler again and I'm going to measure out four inches. And I think I'm gonna fold it this way. So I'm just gonna put my ruler at my four inch mark and start my fold so I know where to go there. And then we'll fold this down. And then I'm going to fold this one over this way. So that we'll have, so this is my, my signature paper, but then we'll have this cute little fold over on this side to go in here as well. So um, I think I'm going to use my scallop again on the edges of my fold. Um, I think that'll look cute if we make it into a little side pocket. Use like that. Okay, and now I just need to put my put my pieces together here. And I'm just gonna do it so that not all the same pages are, are next to each other. Actually, maybe I'll put this one down first. I have my shorter one in there and I have another lined page, another blank page and my 
patterned paper. So this will be my signature. So here's my little folio here. And this is going to be my signature that'll go in here. And you can see that the pages are a little bit shorter than the folio, which is what I wanted so that they don't stick out. And then we can sew them in or um, stitch them in, you know, like with a sewing machine. So for this one, for example, I did actually sew them in. So I just sewed right down the bottom here and sewed all of the pages right into the book, um, which was super easy. But if you don't have a sewing machine or not comfortable with that, you could also do like a three hole pamphlet stitch. And I think that's what I'll do for this one so that you can, you can see how that's done. So um, yeah, let's do a three hole pamphlet stitch for, for this one. Okay, so if we're gonna do a pamphlet stitch, there's a couple of additional things that you need. You need some kind of thread to use. So you can use embroidery floss, you can use nylon thread, you can use, I think this is waxed cotton. I'm gonna give this a try. It's pretty stiff and it's pretty thick, so we'll see how it works out. Um, you're also gonna need some sort of poking tool, so an awl or this is a paper piercer. I believe I like this one because it seems to be thinner, whoops, than my awl. So you can see the difference um, there. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Let's see if I can, maybe I'll just hold up my hand. So you can see one's pretty thick and the other one's pretty thin. So it's easier for me to use the paper piercer. I think it makes a nicer hole. Um, but that's, it, you know, depends on what you have, I guess. Um, and then I, I also have this um, book binding needle. Um, it's really long, it's very sturdy, but it has a nice big eye on it. So I'll be able to get the, my thread into it. And then also um, I'm gonna use some of these binder clips to hold everything in place while I do the binding piece of it. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna mark my holes. Now, I am totally going to do this um, by eye. I'm not going to measure it at all. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my pages in my booklet right where I want them. And I'm gonna put my binder clips on. So I'm just going to put them on each side, top and bottom, to make sure my pages and everything stay put as we're doing the binding and the sewing. It just makes it easier. And I'm keeping it kind of closed because I want to be sure my folds are all lined up so that when I do my piercing, um, they, they're you know right in the place that I want them to be. So now when you're piercing, you could, you know, I like to just use an old um, yellow book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this and I'm just gonna make three holes. So we're gonna make one pretty close to the middle and then we're gonna make one at each end, maybe about a half an inch up from the bottom of the page. So on each side. And once again, like I said, I'm just gonna eyeball this and I'm gonna to try to do it with the booklet pretty closed so that once again, our folds are all aligned where I want them to be. So I'm just eyeballing the center here and I'm just going to use my paper piercer and make sure it goes all the way through for that hole and then I'm going to do the edges the same way. I'm going to do about a half an inch down, make sure my hole goes all the way through, and about a half an inch down over here, and make sure my hole goes all the way through. And if I've done it, you know, carefully, <laughs> I'm not always careful, you can see that my holes are right on the edge of my booklet there. So that's definitely what I wanted. Now I'm gonna leave my binder clips on so that it holds everything in place as I sew. Um, to thread my needle, I wanna take my, whatever thread you're using, and you want about three times the length of your spine. So I'm just about three times should do it. And then I'm going to thread my needle, hopefully, hopefully I can thread it with this. And I'm going to start from the inside and I'm gonna put my needle through the middle hole. So that's our first 
stitch there. We're just gonna pull that through and make sure you leave yourself a tail so you don't end up pulling it out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back in through one of the end holes. So just make sure that when you go in, you've gone through all of your book pages. And sometimes it's a little hard to pull it through. And you wanna pull it snug, but not too tight. We'll tighten it up once we're done making all the stitches. And now we're going to go down through the end, the other end hole. So we're coming up and over the middle hole and going through the end hole. And once again, I'm not worrying about how that it's not real, real tight. Actually, I do need to give myself a little bit more room, I think, so that I can stitch my last stitch here. And then the last stitch is to go back through the middle hole to the center. So now our ends, when we pull this through, are going to be lined up so that we can tie them off. So I'm just taking my needle off. And now you can see my two pieces are in the middle. And I'm gonna take my binder clips off now since I have everything stitched. And I am going to try to tighten this up. So like right now you can see that my thread is kind of loose on the outside here and I wanna make sure that's nice and tight. So I'm going to just pull my ends through. And actually, the other thing you wanna make sure is that your middle is tight. And so this one right now is a little bit loose, so I'm going to very gently just pull that up. So you're just basically wiggling things around until you get it nice and tight. And then we're just gonna tie it in the middle. And when I tie it in the middle, I'm going to make sure that my ends are on either side of the middle strand there. So I'm just going to tie it so that they actually tie down the middle strand. And I'm just gonna do a double knot. This is a, a waxed thread, so it does stay nice and tight for me. And then I'm just going to cut these off. And you, wouldn't, you don't have to cut them off. You could leave them long and put some dangles on there or something if you wanted to. But I think I'm gonna cut mine off. And I'm just gonna, I am gonna leave a little bit um, of a tail there, make sure it stays in place. And there you have it. Now this one is put together. So um, everything is sewn in. Hopefully I didn't sew anything upside down the way I wanted to. That looks good. And then there's my fold. Oh, here it is. So, and here's my, my little fold that I have. So now we have a little side pocket that we can make here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. And this time I'm gonna use my glitter glue. Um, I like that the little nose on there can give me a nice skinny line. And I'm just gonna glue up to the start of my little scalloped edge there and this should glue pretty fast so let me just push that down a little and give that a second and now we have our little side pocket okay so now what's left is we need to decorate and we need to add some ephemera